This is Ray Bradbury. Join me for the next 30 minutes on a tour through time and space. Come along to the far future. Follow me into a strange past with stories that almost could be or might have been. Real or unreal, this is Bradbury 13. They fell. They fell as pebbles fall down wells. They were scattered as jackstones are scattered from a gigantic throw. And now instead of men, there were only voices. All kinds of voices. Disembodied and impassioned in varying degrees of resignation and terror. Ray Bradbury's Kaleidoscope. That's correct, Antarius. 29.6 PSI. No Houston out. That's his second reported sighting tonight. Huh, are you seeing meteors again? A whole cluster of them and debris of some sort. Well, it could be space junk. Yeah. We ought to keep an eye on it, though. Yeah. Hey, Frank. Frank, look at this printout. Well, let's see. Looks like a solid mass. More meteors? I don't know. It's big enough to show up on Megascan. Quadrant 06 Delta. That's in the vicinity of Triton 7. We better let them know. Triton 7, Triton 7. This is New Houston Control. Triton 7, Triton 7. This is New Houston Control. New Houston, this is Triton 7. Over. Triton 7, we're scanning some disturbance in your vicinity. Some sort of debris. Please be advised. We copy, Houston. What do you make of it? Uncertain, Triton. Could be space dust. It could be a solid mass. It could be almost anything. Could it be meteors? It could be. Might be a good idea for you guys to suit up, just to be safe. Right, Houston. What have you got, Hollis? Who knows? Probably another false alarm. And they want us to suit up again. Then we'll suit up. Attention. Attention. We We now have have condition condition yellow yellow alert. alert. Repeat, Repeat, yellow yellow alert. alert. Captain, come on, what's the story? Follow orders, Applegate. Well, this is the third time in 24 hours we've gone through this. How many times... Just do it, Applegate, well, I now. I understand. Now! Dismissed, Applegate. Yes, sir. What are these days? Hollis, let me help you with that helmet. I hate these things. They give me claustrophobia. Yeah, I know, but orders are orders. There. What? What's that? Sounded like the bulkhead. Alert! Alert! Video reporting! What do you look for? Hollis, get us out of here! Crew to stations! Oxygen helmets! Oxygen helmets! Impact! 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 Brace yourself! Knife split it wide open. The men. Where are the men? Thrown into space like a bunch of squirming silverfish scattered in a dark sea. There goes the ship. A million pieces. With that meteor swarm seeking a lost sun. Gone. Listen to them. 
voices calling in the night like lost children. Hollis, this is Stone. Stone? Oh, Stone, Hollis here. Where are you? Never mind. It's a stupid question. How could I know? I don't even know which way is up. I only know that I'm falling head over heels, I think. So we're all falling. We're not men anymore. Not captain, not crew. Just voices. Voices without bodies. We're going away from each other. Here's your hat. What's your hurry? Stone, Hollis, how long can we talk by radio? That depends on how fast you're going your way. And I'm going mine. At 100,000 kilometers an hour, it's not going to be long. What happened? A meteor hit. Blew the ship into a million tiny pieces. Ships do blow up, you know. Yes, they blow up. They really blow up. Is there any way for us to get back together? No. Not unless you put on your force unit. Oh, no. I didn't, did you? You know, there wasn't time. So, here we are. Seven men with no way to get back. There's nothing to do but fall. Fall. Fall? Fall? Fall. Oh, it's a long, long way down. A long way. A long way, is that... Stimson? Stimson, is that you? Do you hear me? Stimson! Wallace. It's a long way down. Stone, uh, this is the captain. I've been listening. Captain, go ahead. Let me try with Stimson. 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 This is the captain. I'm going to die. I can't believe it. I'm going to die. Stimson. I don't want to die. Look here. We've got to get organized. 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 Listen to the man. Organized. Applegate, is that you? Applegate reporting, sir. Oh, boy, you're funny, Captain. Applegate, would you shut up? Come and make me shut up, Hollis. Come and shut me up, huh? So what do you want me to do? Let us all go to pieces? Go where we go. You're not in charge now, Captain. Roll call, anyway. Everyone? <laughs> Roll call! <laughs> Abel, Baker, Kirk! So help me, we're going to die decently. You, maybe. My name's Jackie and Stone. Stone here. Barkley? Here, sir. Wood. Wood? Wood? Make him answer, Captain. Wood? Like I said, you're not in charge here. Here. I don't want to be here. I want to be somewhere else. I don't believe that this is happening. I don't believe that this is happening. Stimson? Please, someone help me. Stimson! Help! I'm falling! Stimson. I'm falling! Stimson! I'm falling! No, take it easy. We're all in the I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I want to be somewhere else. Say that again. All right, Applegate. All right, what? Listen. Listen, we haven't got much time. Time? All the time in the world. All the space in the universe. All we do have is space and time. No, no, listen, we're moving farther apart. We're going to lose radio contact soon. Can't happen too soon for me. I won't have to hear any of your stupid voices. None of you. We'll all just spin off into space, each of us in a different direction, thrown by a centrifugal force. One of us will hit the sun, one of us will hit the moon, some of us will just spin off into the universe and travel forever. That's enough of that! Captain, why don't you shut up? What? You hear me? Don't try and pull rank on me, Captain. Like Stimson said, it is a long way down. I'm ordering you to stop! (laughs) <laughs> Shove your orders! This is mutiny, Captain! Your ship was a bad ship, and you are a bad captain. And I hope you break in half when you hit the moon. Won't somebody help me? It's so far down. It's a long, long way down. Stimson. I'm falling, I'm falling. Stimson, this is Hollis. You've got to stop this. I'm falling, I'm falling! I can't hear you, Stimson. Stop it, we help can't me. hear I'm each falling. other. falling! Hollis, Hollis, this is Applegate. You won't believe this, but... Applegate, what is it? Hollis, he's here. 
What? Stimson, he's alone. He, he's floating toward me. I, I can see him. I can see him. He's down. We're getting closer. Hey, Stimson! Stimson, can you hear me? A long way down. Falling a long way down. Help me! I'll help you, Stimson. I don't like being here. I don't like being here. You won't be, Stimson. Not much longer. Applegate, for heaven's sakes, what's happening? I want to be somewhere else. Well, I promise you. Applegate! Help me, please! Help getting me! closer, Hollis. He's floating near me. I, I, I can almost... I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'll help you, Stimson. Someone, someone, please, please, please. Applegate, what? I'm about help done, me. just about help me. You know, I don't want to be here, do something, help me. I've got it. Please, help me, help me. He's gone. What do you mean, gone? Saved. I saved him. Yeah. Approved? Approved. Captain? Approved. Apple Gate. Well. Now we can talk more clearly, Captain. If you want, we can get organized. Apple Gate. May you burn forever. Why, sir, I'm on my way there now. The way I'm falling, I figure I'll hit the sun in about oh, half a year. <laughs> Stone! Barkley, how about you guys? Where are you heading? I'm touched by your interest, Applegate. I'm headed for the moon, I think. Save a place for the captain, then. How about you, Barclay? Looks like Mars, maybe. If I stay on this course. Hey, this is Lesper. Yeah? Where are you headed, Lesper? Huh. Oh, I'm going past all those planets. Past Mars and Jupiter. Past the moon. Maybe I'll visit Pluto or... Or just keep going into deep space forever. They always said, work hard and you'll go far. Captain, how about you? Think you'll hit the moon with stone? Maybe you can start a colony. Captain? He's gone, Applegate. Gone. How about you, Hollis? Well, I seem to be heading back to Earth. When I hit the atmosphere, it'll burn up. Long before us. But before you. Applegate, what is it? <laughs> hey! <laughs> you guys will never believe this. I. I have no left hand. I just lost my left hand. You what? No kidding. It's strange. I feel it's happening to someone else. Someone else's left hand just cut off by a meteor. That's better. My uniform sleeve has just sealed itself up automatically. Locked itself with that self sealant. Uh, lost some air. But the end of my wrist is frozen solid. Scabbed itself with frost. Uh, Applegate? Come, come help me, huh? Oh, if I could. Uh, are you angry, Hoss? Angry? No, Applegate, I'm not angry. Because I want to tell you something. A long time ago, I threw a herring into your life. You always wanted to get to the top, Hollis. You always wondered what happened. Why you didn't make captain a long time ago. 
Well, I was back at the academy. I put the black mark on you. Just before I got tossed out myself. And your fiancé, remember him? No. I don't remember. I was never there. Yes, you were. No! Listen to me, there's no earth anymore. It's there. No! It's like it never happened. It never was. The green fields, the towns, the rivers are all gone. It's just so far away. It's just stars and blackness now. No. Now there was a girl. No. There was no girl. Yes, there was a girl. And life and an earth and she left you. I don't know why she left you. I'll tell you, I took her away. No. She never lived. Then I took her. You took nothing. Stop it, will you? No more of this talk. What? Stop it, you hear me? Can't you leave us alone? All right, Stone, all right. No more. I'm astounded. Astounded? Yes, I'm amazed. We're all going to be dead in a few hours, and you go on like this. Can't you leave us to remember? Remember what? Good things. The good things. Yes. Just the best. What best? What good? My life. Maybe not yours, but mine. How is it better, Lesper? Let me make a list. A wife on Earth. Good friends on the moon. My, my children on Mars. That's a list. You're right. They're better than a list. They are a life. I'm going to kill all of you in ten minutes. Kill us? Just by opening my helmet. I'll freeze solid in a billionth of a second. And you will all disappear forever. The quickest death in the history of mankind. I'll be frozen forever. In a billion years, I could be circling a planet somewhere, and I won't have changed. I'll still be young. Think of it. I'm thinking. I'm thinking just kill yourself now and quit bending my ear. I'm thinking we should all say what we want to say in these last few minutes. Run our own little films. Play our memories. Lesper, it's all over now. Just like it never happened. I've got my thoughts. I can remember. So what good does it do you now? When a thing's over, it's over. You're no better off than I am. I've had my turn, Hollis. I've circled the sun. I've landed on Mars. I had what I wanted. And I'm not getting mean at the end like you. Mean? Mean? Yeah, mean. Hollis? Hollis, do you hear me? This is Applegate. Hollis, I've been thinking. This isn't good. It's a bad way to die. It makes us mean. You listening, Hollis? Yeah, I'm listening. I lied. A minute ago, I lied. I didn't like you. I didn't take your girl away. I don't know why I said that. I guess I wanted to hurt you. You know, Hollis, we've always fought, you and me. I guess I'm getting old fast, and repenting fast. Hollis... Whatever the reason, I want you to know it. I'm sorry. I was an idiot. Ah, the hell with it. Thanks, Applegate. Don't mention it. Applegate, if only I could. 
<laughs> no. No, I'm being funny. Oh, imagine me needing you. No, oh, burn me to ashes. And burn the ashes to dust. Okay, just take it easy. thing that's cutting me to pieces is taking me for a ride. I'm being drawn away. I think it's the Myrmidon cluster. It goes out past Mars every two years. And I'm right in the middle of it. It's like being in a great big kaleidoscope. Look. Look, it's beautiful. And it's taking me with it. I don't deserve a trip like this. Ah! Is it? White men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands. Voices? Yes. Listen. Wait a minute, that's right. No sound is ever lost. What? Look, remember years ago when we were kids? Didn't we used to wonder what happened to sounds when we made them? Did they travel out into space forever and live their own lives? Well, well, here's your answer. That's it, Hollis. It's an electronic cloud. Applegate's in a mass of rocks and, and dust and magnetism that traps old radio waves. <laughs> oh, too much. Too much me, the, the, the monster of all time. <laughs> and I grow up like this. <laughs> you stay behind and, and die your plain vanilla deaths. And me, I go out in style. A swarm of meteors with Hitler, and Churchill, and Charlie McCarthy. <laughs> what company? <laughs> can you still hear me? Yes, we can hear you. It's me, a whole grand bunch circling the world for the next ten billion years. It finally happened, Holland. Something finally happened to me. The thing I was waiting for. <laughs> so long. So long, burn. All of you. <laughs> Burn, burn. Same to you, Anthony. Hollis. Hollis, why don't we sign off? The rest of us? It's a good idea. Hey, Lester. Can you see the meteor swarm that took Applegate? Yes. It's beautiful. Can, can you see any of us? Afraid not, Hollis. But I see. Or I think I see. There you go, home in the dark, Lesper. And there you go off in the night, Stone, Barkley. Ah, remember those nights when you were a kid and stayed out in the middle of the street playing ball until you couldn't see it was so dark? Not wanting to go home, and at last, all the mothers would be calling from all the houses from blocks around. And finally, even though you hated it, you'd drag your bats and your scuffed shoes home. As if summer would never come again. Like there was no tomorrow. I remember. Well, keep on remembering. Don't let anybody say otherwise. Well, so long, Lesper. Wood, stone. Hey, Hollis. Yeah? Last one in's a rotten egg. Sleep well, Hollis. Here goes nothing.
alone. There goes wood toward the sun, stone to the moon, and there flies Barkley out past Mars forever. And Applegate, him and his meteors, fine company. Pieces of a kaleidoscope. Flying apart. And me. What did my life mean? Did I do one bright, beautiful thing that might be remembered by someone, somewhere? What did I do? What? In a few hours, I'll hit Earth's atmosphere. And when I do, I'll catch fire and burn up like a meteor. I'll flash across the sky in flames. All the world will look up and see me for... See me for three seconds. Three seconds. Hmm. I wonder if anyone will... Look. If anyone will really see me, I wonder. Mommy, look, it's a falling star. Oh, oh make a wish. Make a wish. Kaleidoscope was adapted from the story by Ray Bradbury. Featured in the cast were Scott Wilkinson, Ivan Crossland, Mike Flynn, James Arrington, Mike McDonough, Rick Macy, Logan Field, and Tim Eisenhart. Original music by Roger Hoffman and Greg Hansen. Production assistant was Patrick Mead. Associate producer was Jeff Rader. Bradbury 13 was created, produced, and directed by Mike McDonough. Executive producer was Dean Van Eytert. This program was produced with the funds provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting through National Public Radio Satellite Program Development Fund. The program was produced by Brigham Young University Media Services, which is solely responsible for its content. This is Paul Fries speaking. This is Ray Bradbury. Join me for the next 30 minutes on a tour through time and space. Come along to the far future. Follow me into a strange past with stories that almost could be or might have been. Real or unreal, this is Bradbury 13. As long as the rockets had spun a silver web across space, Harry Bittering had been able to accept Mars. But now, the web gone, the rockets lying in jigsaw heaps of molten girder and unsnaked wire on Earth. People from Earth left to the strangeness of Mars, the cinnamon dusts and wine airs. This was the moment that Mars had waited for. Now, it would eat them. Ray Bradbury's Dark They Were and Golden Eyed. What was that? Just a bump. It means we've landed. 
Landon, we're here? Yes. Uh, get your things together, kids. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mars. On behalf of the crew, we wish you all a long and prosperous stay here. Good luck. We'll need it. Everyone set? All set. All set. We're ready, Harry. Well, ready or not, here we come. Wow. Look at the wind blow. Let's get back on the rocket and go back tonight. Why, Harry? Listen. It's just wind. We had wind in Boston. It's eaten away the hills and the cities. Look. Chin up, Perry. We've come at least 65 million miles to get here. Let's make the best of it. Ah, you're right. We'll make the best of it. Right, kids? Right. Come on. We've got a house to build. getting used to the wind. It took me a few months, but now I think I'd miss it if it wasn't there. <sighs> Glad you like it. Don't you? Cora, sometimes I feel like a salt crystal in a stream being washed away. We don't belong here. No, for heaven's sakes, Cora, let's buy tickets for home. We can't go back. Well, of course we can. One of these days, the bomb will fix it so there is no more Earth. Then we we'll be safe here. Safe and insane. Come on. I'll fix you a nice earth breakfast. Here you are. Bacon and eggs. Runny yolks. Just the way you liked them. Hey, have you seen the paper? What's it say? Another 700 from Earth. Colonial days all over again. <laughs> I'll say. Why, in another year, they'll have half a million Earthmen on Mars. Big cities, everything. Good. Maybe you'll like it better. Maybe. The point is that they said we'd fail. Said the Martians would resent our invasion. But did we find any Martians? Not a living soul. Oh, we found their empty cities, but not one living Martian. Oh, there it goes, shaking the house again. Daddy, I don't like it when it blows that hard. I don't know. Maybe there are Martians around here. What? Well, sometimes at night, I think I can hear them. I hear the wind blowing sand against my window. Like that, here? It's only the wind. When it blows, I get up and see those towns, way up in the mountains where the Martians lived. I think I can see them moving around up there. I wonder if those Martians' mind is living here. I wonder if they won't do something to us for coming here. That's nonsense. We're good, decent people. Remember that. You know, all dead cities have some kind of ghosts in them. Memories, I mean. What kind of memories? Well, you see a staircase and you wonder what Martians looked like climbing you see Martian paintings, and, and you wonder what the painter was like. You make a little ghost in your mind, a memory. You haven't been prowling around those ruins, have you? No, sir. Well, you see that you stay away from them. Pass the jam, Laura. Just the same. I bet something happens. What is it? On the radio just now. It's the war. Earth. What? On my radio. Here, let me see that thing. New York is the scene of terrible devastation. The result of a nuclear detonation near the heart of the city. The primary target of the bombs was the New York launching site of the Mars rockets. Reports are scheduled. All the space rockets are blown up. There's no more rockets to Mars ever. Oh, Harry. It's all right, Cora. We're stranded on Mars forever? Not forever. The rockets will get through someday. 
We'll go about our business as if nothing were wrong. We'll keep things going until the war ends, the rockets come back again. Will they really come back? I promise they will. Okay. I go inside and lay down for a bit. Go on. Cora, why don't you go inside and keep them occupied for a while? What are you going to do? I don't know. Work, I suppose. Work and forget. I'll weed the garden. You know, I always told myself, tomorrow, if I want, I can buy a ticket back to Earth. And somehow, knowing that always helped me accept living here. This is our home now. Forever. Yes. Our hills, our mountains. Those mountains had old, proud Martian names once. But we changed them. Now there's the Ford Hills, Vanderbilt Plateau, Roosevelt Seas, Rockefeller Rivers. Somehow it doesn't seem right to change those names. But that's their names now. Oh, on our maps, maybe. The old settlers on Earth knew how to name things, though. They used the old Indian prairie names. Wisconsin, Minnesota, Ohio, Utah, Waukegan. The old names, the old meanings. Yes, they were good names. They're up there now. All the dead ones, the Martians. Well, well here we are. Here we are. All, alone. All alone. Cut off. Come down. Move us out. Take your cities back. We're helpless. I'm going in. Cora, wait. Look at this. What is it? Uh, these blossoms. From the peach tree. Do you see? Well, what about them? Well, don't you see? They're different. They've changed. What? They're not peach blossoms anymore. Well, they look all right to me. They're not. They're wrong. How can you tell? Well, I don't know. An extra petal, a leaf, something. The color's wrong. The smell. And look over here in the carton. Look, right here. Do these look like carrots? Yes. Uh, no. I don't know. They've changed. Maybe. Well, you know they have. They're almost onions, and they're almost carrots, and... Radishes. They smell almost the same. They feel almost the same. But they're different. Coral, what's happening? What is it? Dad! Mom! Come look! Timmy? Over here! The cow! I was looking at her and I saw it. Look at her head. Here. What is it? A bump? Not a bump. A horn, Cora. It's growing a third horn. We've got to get away. We'll eat this food and then we'll change. Harry. I can't let it happen. There's only one thing to do. We've got to burn the food. But it's good. It's not poisoned. But it is. Subtly, very subtly. It... We can't touch it. And look at the house. Even that, the wind's done something to it. It just needs a little paint. No, don't you see? The air's burned it. And look at the boards. The fog at night's warped them all out of shape. It's not an Earthman's house anymore. Oh, your imagination. No, Cora, not this time. Where are you going? Into town. We've got to do something. I'll be back. Isn't that Harry Bittering coming this way? Sure is. Looks like something ain't sitting right with him. I'll say. Hello, Harry. What brings you to town? What are you going to do? Beg your pardon? You did hear the news this morning, didn't you? Well, sure, we heard it, Harry. Well, what are you going to do about it? Do? What can we do, Harry? Build a rocket, that's what. A rocket? And go back to all that trouble? Not me. You must want to go back. But why, Harry? Well, look, you've got gardens. Have you noticed the peach blossoms? 
The onions, the grass? Well, yeah, seems I did. Doesn't it scare you? Can't recall that it did, Harry. Well, you idiots! Oh, Harry, you've got to help me. Help yourselves. If we stay here, we'll all change. It's the air. Don't you smell it? It's something in the air, a Martian virus or pollen. Smells like rain to me. <laughs> Listen to me, Sam! Yes, Harry? Will you help me build a rocket? Harry, I got a whole load of metal and some blueprints. Now, you want to work in my metal shop on a rocket? You're welcome. I'll sell you the whole kit and caboodle for 500 bucks. You ought to be able to build a pretty fair rocket by yourself. In about 30 years. <laughs> Don't laugh. I'll do it. Sure, Harry. Sam. Your eyes. What about them? Didn't they used to be gray? Well, no, I don't remember. They were, weren't they? Why do you ask, Harry? Because now they're kind of yellow-colored. Is that so? Harry, what color are your eyes? My eyes? They're blue. Here, take a look in this mirror. See for yourself. Turning yellow. Welcome to the club, Harry. Harry! Harry, put down that hammer for a minute. What? You haven't stopped all day. It's supper time. I can't. I'm too busy. But you have to eat here. I brought it out for you. I won't touch it. Why not? I only eat food from our deep freeze. Food that we got from Earth. I won't touch a thing from the garden. Harry, face it. You can't build a rocket. I worked in a shop once when I was in college. I know what I'm doing. Besides, once I get going, the others will help me. Will they? We've got to get away, Cor. We've got to. Ruined plans all over. Harry, it's been weeks now since you've rested. Take the day off. Look, Flora. Frame's done. Some of the men helped me move it. I told you they would. You're not eating. You're getting weaker. Here, I made you a sandwich. I can't eat that. Some of it came from our garden. Harry, I've used up all the food in the deep freeze. There's nothing left. I have to use the food grown on Mars. Now you must eat. How can you finish the rocket if you have no strength? All right. Good. There's some soup in the thermos. Cora, do I look thinner to you? And taller? Well, you've lost some weight, but that's probably from not eating. Some of the boys said I was getting taller, thinner. I, I told them that they were crazy. Please, Harry, take the rest of the day off. The wind's dying down. It's going to be hot. The children want to swim in the canals and hike. Wouldn't you enjoy some time with them? But this is a crisis. I can't waste time. Just for an hour? A swim will do you good. Come on. Oh. All right. Just for an hour. Good. The car's all packed. Come on. Before it gets too late. Tim loves the canal. Look at him swim. His skin sure is brown. So is Laura. They're always out playing in the sun. Laura, how long have your eyes been yellow? Always, I guess. They didn't change from brown in the last three months? No, I don't think so. Why? Uh, never mind. The children's eyes are yellow, too. Sometimes growing children's eyes change color. Maybe we're children, too. At least to Mars. That's a thought. I think I'll swim. Come on! <laughs> oh, it does feel good. I wonder what's down at the bottom of these canals. I bet there's pieces of pottery and old statues. Could be. Now, I'll take a look. Be careful. Oh, I will. Be right back. I 
started sinking down, down, like an old Martian statue in green sirens. It's quiet down here and peaceful. If I lie here on the bottom long enough, the water will eat away my flesh till the bones show like coral. Just my skeleton left. Then the water can build on my bones green things, deep water things, red things, yellow things, change, change, slow, deep, silent change. After all, isn't that what's up there? There's the Martian sky up there above the water. It's like a big river, a Martian river. And all of us lying deep in it, in our sunken houses, like hidden crayfish. And the water washing away our bodies, lengthening the bones. And it's time for some air. Up, up. Oh, hi, Tim. I've been on the bottom. Uther. What? Uther. You know, Uther's the Martian word for father. Where did you learn that? I don't know. Around. Oh. Uther? Yes? I... Go ahead. I want to change my name. Change it? Yes. What's wrong with Tim for a name? The other day when you called Tim, I didn't even hear it. I said to myself... That's not my name. I've got a new name I want to use. What is the new name? Linnell. Isn't that a good name? Can I use it? Well... Why not? Yes, you can use it, Tim. Yay! I'm Linnell! I'm Linnell! Why did we do that? I don't know. It just seemed like a good idea. Come on, let's get out of the water and take a walk. There are some old Martian villas I'd like to see. All right. Isn't this lovely up here? Yes, it's fine. And look, the old fountains are still running, pumping water. Oh, and look at the villa. It has a good view of the valley, doesn't it? Fantastic. Let's go in. The floor is all made of marble, and so are the walls. <gasps> Look, there's a swimming pool. Yes. It's all so cool and refreshing, oh, especially when it's so hot outside. It is nice. Harry, if we could move up here to this villa for the summer, just until it starts to cool off. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, come on. We're going back to town. There's work to do on the rocket. Can I help you, Utha? Yeah, hand me the blowtorch, will you? Sure. Here. Thanks. I wonder who that could be. Looks like some of the men from town. Yeah. Morning, Harry. You boys headed somewhere? Everyone's going, you heard? Going where? Up to the villa in the hills. Yeah, Harry, I'm going too. We all are. That's right, Harry. What about you? Oh, I've got some work to do here. Work? Well, you can finish that rocket in the autumn when it's cooler. Yeah, it's too hot to work on a thing like that now. It's nice and cool up at the villa. You know, they got fountains that are still running up there, and the paths are covered with water. It's it's like wading in a cold stream. Keeps your feet cool all summer long. How about it, Harry? I got the frame all set up. Autumn, Harry. Autumn would be the best. Autumn would be better. It would be cooler, wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be a lot better. 
I'd have plenty of time then. That's right. All right. In the autumn. I'll start work then. Come on then, Harry. We got plenty of room on the truck for your stuff. Good. Hey, Harry, I got a villa near the Terra Canal. Hey, you mean the Roosevelt Canal, don't you? No, Terra. The old Martian name. Yeah, but on the map it... Forget the map. It's Terra now. Anyway, it's in great shape. And what of you? You should see it. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Come on, Harry. Let's get your stuff on board. You got everything out of your rooms? Everything we're going to take. I've got everything. Good. I'll come check it in a minute. Carl, what about the front room? I don't know. The furniture looked fine in Boston, and it looked good here in the cottage. But up in the villa? Well, maybe we can get it when we come back in the autumn. Yes, in the autumn. We'll get it then. In the meantime, I've got some ideas on furniture for the villa. Big, lazy furniture. Here. Here. Your encyclopedia. You're taking it along, aren't you? I'll come and get it next week. Well, that's it, then. I've shut off the water and the gas. What about the door? There. Locked tight. All set, Harry? Yeah, we need to get going. Yeah, everything's loaded, Sam. Gosh, we're not taking much, considering all that we brought to Mars. This is only a handful. It's all we need. Harry, you drive this truck. I'll go with Wendell. Okay, everybody. Up in. Goodbye, house. Goodbye, town. It's beautiful here. I can see the whole valley. Yes. And there's our cottage down there. It's time to go back, isn't it? Yes, but we're not going, Cora. There's nothing there for us. Your books, your good clothes. Ah, the town's empty. No one's going back. There's no reason to. None at all. I guess you're right. Look down there. Such odd, such ridiculous houses the earth people built. They didn't know any better. Such ugly people. I'm glad they're gone. Gone? (laughs) (laughs) Where did they go? I don't know. We'll go back to town maybe next year. Or the year after that. Or maybe the year after that. Maybe. Come on. Let's take a swim. Captain the Hollings. Come in, Hollings. Hollings here. Find anything? Nothing. Just more deserted houses and overgrown gardens. No one's lived here in years. Right. Keep looking. We've got to find someone. Right. Hollings out. Uh, Captain! The town's empty, but we found native life in the hills, sir. Native life? Hmm? There aren't supposed to be any natives left. Uh, dark people, yellow eyes, brown skin. Sound like Martians, all right. Well, they're very friendly. We talked a bit. They really pick up English fast. I'm, I'm amazed. I'm sure our relations will be very friendly with them, sir. How many are there? Oh, six to eight hundred, I'd say. They're living in those marble ruins in the hills. Tall, healthy men. Beautiful women. Did they tell you what happened to the colony from Earth who built this place? They didn't have the slightest idea what happened to this town or the people. Strange. Do you suppose the Martians killed them? No, they look peaceful. Chances are a plague did this town in, sir. Maybe. Well, there's lots to be done now, Lieutenant. We'll have a job of remapping to do, renaming the mountains and rivers and such. Calls for a little imagination. I think we can handle that, sir. What do you think of naming those mountains the Lincoln Mountains? And this canal here, the Washington Canal. Fine, sir. And those hills. We can name those hills for you, Lieutenant. Would you like that? Uh, 
Y- yes, sir. Diplomacy, Lieutenant. And you, as a favor, might name a town for me. Polishing the old apple, eh? And that valley over there. The Einstein Valley. And those peaks. Uh, are you listening, Lieutenant? Hmm? Oh, uh, of course, sir. Well, as I was saying, those peaks over there would be good, called the Rockefeller Peaks. Dark They Were and Golden Eyed was adapted from the story by Ray Bradbury. Featured in the cast were Bryce Chamberlain, Beverly Rowland, Steve Densley, Jennifer Coleman, Coleman Creel, Max Robinson, Jay Bernard, and Nathan Hale. Original music by Roger Hoffman and Greg Hansen. Production assistant was Patrick Mead. Associate producer was Jeff Rader. Bradbury 13 was created, produced, and directed by Mike McDonough. Executive producer was Dean Van Eitert. This program was produced with the funds provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting through National Public Radio Satellite Program Development Fund. The program was produced by Brigham Young University Media Services, which is solely responsible for its content. This is Paul Fries speaking.